Caves discovered near Gordon River, claimed Advocate newspaper article on the 24th of August 1933. This wasn't the first time these caves had been brought to light, so to speak, as another article had also been published by the Mercury in January that year, emphasising the huge potential of the discovery. The basis of the article was that tourists had complained about a lack of accommodation available whilst visiting the Gordon River and a hut had been proposed at Eagle Creek should support be given by the tourist department, where nearby there were reported to be underground caves of rare beauty. The proposer for the hut was a Mr Fred Grining. He and his brother Harry had been charting cruises down the Gordon, a tradition that has been passed on through five generations of Grining and still remains in operation today. Following the report of the men, Mr Coleman, secretary of the local tourist association, made a visit to the caves in which the journey was then described. Landing at Eagle Creek, 13 miles up the river, the party made their way inland, about a mile and a half, and were able to locate caves approximately 80 foot in length. From the roof and sides hang innumerable stalactites. Mr. Coleman then intended to forward the find to the Tourist Bureau for further discussion, but despite extensive mapping of the area done in the late 70s, the location and further details of this cave have not been documented. The sedimentary rock known as Gordon Limestone was formed in shallow layers by decaying sea creatures, leaving behind high levels of calcium carbonate. This resulting stone was a useful resource for the 1822 convict settlement of Sarah Island who burned it inside kilns to create quicklime, a form of mortar. It's been of some interest to me to attempt to find this cave, so taking advantage of a rare good winter's window, Erin and I set off to Strawn to meet up with Yvonne and Captain Crozzy who were waiting on board the majestic Kelly Basin ready to join in on the adventure. Morning guys, so here we are on the uh, majestic Kelly Basin, heading into the Gordon River and we've got the crew on board, we've got Aaron, Croz and Vaughn and uh, we're just at the mouth of the Gordon at the moment, you can see over here there's uh, the Morrisons who are salvaging some uh, Huon Pine, they got a license to do that. So this is all the uh, the rubbish or any leftover logs that were left in the river because it's always still making its way down this river. They've been harvesting hue and pine out of this river for nearly 200 years now. So I'll take you on board and give you a look inside. Would you rather be in the middle of winter? No, no. Nah, I don't reckon. So that tree right there is a Huon pine. Got another one here. And down the front. Everywhere actually. About 50% of those trees there are Huons. That's us. <laughs>
yeah, it's a beast, isn't it? We'll be back soon, my love. Victorious. Victorious. We know where we're going. <laughs> I've been here before. Yeah, I finally know the place now. Everything's wet. Well, I'm sure we tied the I tied the rope this end, or Max tied the other end. Yep. So we found the start of the track. We've got. Uh, they, in the newspaper article, it said a mile and a half mm -hmm. up the track. So we've, that's uh, 2.4 k's that we're going to do. Uh, right. um, so we'll probably what, walk a couple of k's, crossy, and then start keeping yeah. our eyes open. Yeah. It did say in one of the articles it was just a short distance from the track. So yeah. Yeah. First get to the zone, then start exploring. Track's a little hard to follow at times. But then you get these nice little patches here that run good for a while. This might be where it heads away from Eagle Creek, hey, maybe. Yeah. See this knob? Yep. This is what I had in my mind. For the cavey area? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, sandstone limestone. There's beautiful hue and pine here. Just off the side of the track. You would only be how old you reckon, Crosby? Sixty? Maybe? Yeah, nearly hundred. What's that? I think my convict one's done with an X. Oh, right. Hmm. That's my opinion. Yep. This is an old bridge here, actually. Yep. Did they, did they have, they didn't take horses over this way, did they? Yeah, yeah. I suppose you took the Jane. All, all the way to the Jane? Yeah. Oh, right. Yep. Yep. It does. It definitely looks like some sort of sink. Yep. So if we go, oh, if we, we get around it, and can we? Yeah. If you go along another ten meters, cross, you'll be able to cut in. You gotta come down, Cross. Oh, it's worth sticking our nose in, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Better check it out. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool, Crosby. Better come in, I reckon this is it. Here, I'll, um, I'll get the torch gear out. Look at those things, they're huge.
Hey for little uh, crickets or something here. Pretty impressive, look at them. There's a little skylight here. This would have to be it. This would have to be it, wouldn't it? What are those little sacks here? Cave spider eggs, are they? Wow, and then look at this big drop off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep. You'll be bush bashing and then all of a sudden. Yeah. Bang. Pretty epic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So it never gets over a foot. Didn't go over the top of the knob and work its way down. No, it must yeah. have just ran through and. Yeah. Pressure went Alright, so the plan is we've still got a bit of daylight left. We're gonna go up stream a little bit, and the Crozzy is gonna take us to some convict ruins, some lime. What were they, Crozzy? They were lime kiln. lime kiln ruins. So I've, I've actually never seen anything on the Gordon, all these little side attractions. So this will be really interesting. All right, see if we can pull Aaron off the boat for it. <laughs> Thank you. 
stable. It's the west coast of Tassie, I don't think anything's stable. <laughs> That's a lime kiln. Lime. All the limestone about here. They built into the bank and they they've made it out of limestone rocks and whatever. And they put the limestone in there with wood and yeah. fire it and breaks down the limestone rock into lime that you make cement out of. Yeah, right. Or water. Would they have used this for Sarah Island? Yes, that's where they've got oh, their mortar cool. for the brickwork on Sarah Island. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Where would these bricks be from, Crossy? Uh, it's a real mystery, those ones. Yeah, these are recent, are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah they look new. I don't know, I don't understand this. But that there, which they've used... Yes, in the hill. Unless they bought them in from England or somewhere. They're not convict bricks. Convict hmm. ones are only small. Huh. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Isn't this gorgeous in here? Ah, oh, Pretty clear around here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a convict brick. That's the size they made them. Yeah, they're smaller, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Can I hold it? Go for it. Yeah, they're like medium sized bricks. Mm. What do you think the guy that made this did to become a convict? <laughs> Not much. Poor dude. Yeah. Probably stole a loaf of bread or yeah. something. Look at this little one here. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I reckon they've had a camp with some sort of here and a fireplace in it. Mm. What a monster! Yeah, can't get it all in. Nah, I've had to switch to fish eye.
So this is the same as what's over on East Pillinger, isn't there? There's some of these in the bush, I think. Just rotted right down to the ground. Yep. All for the sake of four poles and a few sheets of line. Yeah. It's pathetic. Don't just let it go. They got a habit of doing that. And then I tell you, they look after our heritage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke.